This is a video on solving quadratic equations in one variable. All right, here's some tips. First of all, this is an advanced skill due to the number of steps. It's also worth a lot of points because of the number of steps. So if, if you're pretty good at basic math and you can follow um, you know, a lengthy process, this is a good place to get some extra points to push you over to passing. So the second thing is really use the answer choices to help you. This will help you recognize that, oh, this is a, I need to use the quadratic formula, and I've, I will model that here today. Please make sure that you write down both formulas. Um, there's a temptation to just um, take the, the information on the screen and, and skip a step without writing the formulas down. Really discourage that. You want to be able to take your time and double check your work as you're going. So because of that, the fifth tip is perhaps flag this question when you're taking the test, move on, and then come back to it if you have time because it, this can be a time-intensive question. Um, and so I, I normally, you don't want to spend five minutes before you've got to some of the other easier questions. So um, again, perhaps flag this one and then move on. All right, so the first thing is that here is a, um, you know, a screenshot of the full formula sheet. And then this is what it looks like when, it's, uh, when you kind of zoom in on it. So you have the standard form of the quadratic equation, and then you have the quadratic formula. You will have to use both of these, and these are the ones that I encourage you to write down. Okay, here's the first problem. We have 2m squared minus 7m minus 13 equals negative 10. So the first thing, if you look at this equation down here, this is the standard form that we want. We need it so that um, y equals zero, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we need to set this so that it's equal to zero on this side. And then we can, we can figure out what a, b, and c are. So first step would be to write this down as is, just straight. And then you're going to use basic uh, operations to isolate, make this zero. So we have minus 10 plus 10 is going to make that zero, which is what we want. What we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side of the equation. So now we have minus 13 and plus 10, which is going to give us minus 3. And then we're just going to drop these ones straight down. So we've got 2m squared minus 7m minus 3 equals 0, which is what we want. Check mark there. So now we can take this standard form. We'll put y on this side. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then this will be ax squared plus bx plus c. And therefore, a is going to be 2. So if we put over here, what we need is a, b, and c. And b is negative 7. Sorry, a is 2. And c is negative 3. So now we can use the quadratic formula down here. So I do always recommend to take the time to write out the full quadratic formula. Okay, so it's negative b. This negative is really key. Um, you're going to see test makers really want to know that you can handle this. And they also want to know that you can handle b squared when b is a negative. So you want to be able to anticipate that b on a standardized test almost always will be negative because they want to make sure that you know how to handle this and this. So let's continue. Minus 4 times a times c divided by all of this divided by 2 times a. All right, so let's start tackling these b's here. So b is negative 7. So we have a negative and then b on the inside, which is negative 7. So we have a negative negative 7 plus minus the square root of, I'm going to put this in parentheses again, negative 7 squared, okay, because I want to keep that all together. Um, and you'll see why in a second. Let me write, can finish writing the whole thing out. Minus 4 times a, which is 2, and then times c, which is negative 3. All of this over 2 
times a, which is 2. All right, so if you have a calculator, one thing you can um, you can always do, uh, I believe, if you were to do a negative and then parentheses negative 7 and then parentheses, it's going to tell you the answer is positive 7, which is correct. So don't forget you have a calculator here. Um, I, you do have to use parentheses, I'm pretty sure. Let's check that, actually. I think if you do a, a negative negative, it doesn't work. It's going to give you, eh, it does work. I thought it might give you a syntax error or something. Um, so anyway, use the calculator here. But that's the first thing test makers are going to make sure that you know how to handle. So plus minus. We'll get to this plus minus in a second. I know this is weird. It's like, what? how can you have both? We'll get to that. Um, and so here's the other one. Oftentimes when I'm working with students, they immediately come over here to the calculator and they take negative 7 and then they square it and they say the answer is negative 49 and it's not negative 49. What is going on here if you think about it? Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. Okay, so what happened here? Well, the calculator is following PEMDAS. It's, it's treating this exponent here, this 7 squared, and it's getting 49. And then it's multiplying the negative. Okay, it's distributing the negative, if you will. And so the calculator is not broken here. It's just following the rules. So if you want to get it correct, you have to use parentheses. Negative 7 parentheses. And then you're squaring the whole parentheses, and you'll get 49. Okay, again, that's why test makers are going to give, make sure the B is negative because they want to make sure you know how to handle that. And so this here, this negative 4 times 2 times negative 3, I always like to do this in one step. Using the calculator, you all, for certain will be able to use the calculator when you have this type of question. Um, and so hopefully you can see I'm just copying it. Negative 4, so I'm treating this minus as a negative now. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 3. Hit enter, and I get positive 24. Okay, all of this divided by 4. So I think I can squeeze this stuff over here in the side. So we have 7 plus minus 49 plus 24 is going to be 73 over 4. And so if you look, that is actually one of our answer choices here. And this one is correct. All right, so here's the next question. Solve the following equation. So again, notice it's not set equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first write this down. Um, minus 15 equals negative 7. And so we're going to add 7 here in order to make this equal to 0. So we have negative 15 plus 7 is going to make this negative 8. Um, so we have 8n, just dropping these down, plus 7n minus 8. And so we've got our ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. And so we're doing this so that we can get um, values for a, b, and c. a will now be 8 positive 8, B will be positive 7, and C will be negative 8. Now I would write the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. All of that divided by 2A. All right, so now we'll take our A, B, and C, and we plug it into the quadratic formula there. Um, so negative b is going to be negative 7. Notice it's a positive 7, so we will just write it as negative 7 because of this negative that's here, which is one of the, the main mistakes I see students make. So please um, note that. Plus minus the square root of b squared, so this is just 7 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 8, times c, which is negative 8. All of this over 2 times 8. All right, so what we have then is the negative 7. So you're immediately, most likely, getting rid of a and c. And now you already have 50-50 just by doing this process here. So keep that in mind that these problems, there is kind of an easy way of thinking about them. Um, 
you can look for this first number and see if you can um, eliminate before. Uh, so if you have to guess, get it down to 50-50. So let's um, continue here. So 7 squared, you can put that in the calculator. 7 squared is going to be 49. So we've got uh, 49. And then what I would do is take... Um, I like to write all of these and use this as a negative 4 times a positive 8 times a negative 8. So I do negative 4 um, times 8 times negative 8, which is going to be positive 256 over 16. So let's add 49 and 256. So let's do 49 plus 256 equals 305. So we end up with negative 7 plus minus the square root of 305 over 16. Is that one of our answer choices? Sure enough, right here, it's B. Okay, so... Um, I'm not going to take this one any any further for just the sake of time. Um, but again, you would you would do the square root of 305, which I don't think is a perfect square. That's one of the reasons why I'm not going to take it all the way through. Um, yeah. So if you get this, and let's say you did want it, you need to do the square root, or sorry, this uh, conversion button. You get 17.46. So I'm I'm not going to to continue this one. Um, all right, here is our third problem. And so let me show you just a little trick I've been alluding to with the with the B. The fact that you've got B that sticks out here and we have a negative. This will be B, okay? And so we end up with um, B is going to be equal to a negative 3. But remember, it goes in here. We're going to end up with a negative, negative 3. And so this will ultimately end up being a positive 3 because a negative negative 3. So we can probably assume that the answer is not B and it's not going to be D. Now let's, you know, we're going to go do the whole thing, but it's just a little trick to teach you if you're running out of time and you want to, you're just going to have to make a guess or to help, to help you um, so that you don't make a mistake. You can just focus on B. All right, so let's set that aside for a second. You know, write the equation down, minus 3x minus 15 equals 5, so it doesn't equal 0. We need to make it equal to 0, so we're going to subtract 5 here on, on both sides. Okay, so here's your sides. This now becomes 0. We have negative 15 minus 5. I'm always encouraging students, put this in a calculator, because this is one of the most common things that students get wrong. Um, if you have negative 15 minus, oops, sorry, minus 5, that's actually, I wrote that wrong. Let me do that again. Minus 15 minus 5, not minus a negative 5. But you'll see we get negative 20 as an answer choice, okay? Lots of students, when they do this, they want to tell me the answer is negative 10 or even positive 10. They may get confused. So get in the habit of putting in it, this in the calculator if you have the time. All right, so we've got 2x squared, just dropping these down, minus 3x. Now we're going to use the standard form here. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. And so we have a, b, and c that we're trying to get. a will be 2. b will be negative 3. Okay, and c will be negative 20. All right, now again, take the time to write this down. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all of this divided by 2 times a. So again, we have a negative, negative 3 for b plus minus negative 3. So I'm putting this in parentheses uh, to square it so that you know if you put it in the calculator you need to use parentheses or just um, convert it somehow before. So 
a is 2 and c is negative 20. Let's extend this out. Okay, now all of this over 2 times 2. All right, so again, negative negative 3 is going to be positive 3 plus minus. This is negative 3 times negative 3, which should give us a positive 9. Okay, so we got 9 here. And then this, I enter it all in the calculator like this. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 20. And I get positive 160. All of this over 4. So this will end up being 3 plus minus the square root of 169 over 4. So um, the square root of 169 is actually a perfect square. So let's prove that. Let's do second and our square root sign to get 169. And it's 13. So we end up with, uh, let's put it over here. So we end up with 3 plus minus 13 over 4. So here's the answer choice that we want. This one I will take all the way through for you just so you can see it. So if we do 3 plus 13 divided by 4, that will be 16 over 4, which is 4. Okay? And then over here you could do 3 minus 13 over 4, which will give you a negative 10 over 4, which can be reduced to negative 5 over 2. Okay, so that is how you do quadratic equations on the GED. So, you know, in summary, make sure you um, take your time and you really use the formula sheets and really write stuff down. This is something you really can't do in your head. Um, one thing I would do is flag these questions and come back to them. And secondly, or third, I guess, um, this is something I would I would recommend for people that um, are really good at solving equations and just um, getting some of the more basics on the GED finished. I, I don't encourage students that are scoring in the 130s or the low 140s to, to really focus on this because it's just, um, it, this is one of the more difficult things on the GED and you can pass without knowing how to do quadratics. So um, good luck. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passtheged.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.